And welcome back to Ministry Now. You know, like some of you, our guest was frustrated at seeing how the Christian voice was ignored in the local, state, and national policy making. And that's why he founded Million Voices to inform and mobilize believers on civic issues. You know, this November 8th, voters, especially Christians, get to decide whether we want more of the policies passed in the last two years or if there's a better direction forward. Please welcome the CEO of Million Voices, John Graves. All right, well, John, welcome to the show. You know, a lot, Good to be ha- back. A lot has happened since you were last here. Yes. Can you give us an update on uh, what's going on? Yes, here? we're we're within the week uh, of the election. I think it's going to be a historic election. Uh, actually, I think a lot of people are very very frustrated and are going to show up. It's going to shock a lot of people. Uh, Hispanics and what I call mama bears are, I think, the two people that are going to that are going to really show up and change these elections. And we've built new tools to empower Christians uh, to do that in, in all the key states. So, um, can we be assured that this can be a safe election? Because <laughs> um, I'm already hearing yes, groanings from yes. across America um, that of things that are happening. Yep. It, it will. It's not going to be perfect. It's going to yeah. be better than it was in 2020, but we still have a long way to go. So I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. it's one of the things we have to overcome. A yeah. lot of believers, a lot of people are still upset about 2020 and they're like, why show up? Well, it's just one more reason. It's like, uh, why pray if there's injustice in the world? Why yeah. why witness if not everybody gets saved? Our job is to be faithful stewards of what God's given us, and we've got to show up. We Even if in some places we have to beat the margin of cheat. Uh, and so I'm just encouraging people, don't, don't give up. Use your voice. Okay, so people are watching. And by the way, so many of you have written and you called and you said, okay, we... We need some guidance. We need to know what these candidates stand for. We need to hear the truth about what's what's going right. on. I mean, there have been some very, I mean, shocking things for me to see in the body of Christ as right. far as pastors yes. endorsing candidates that are not pro-life. That's right. I mean, and it just blows my mind. It really does. I'm not going to name any names, but I'm just, we need to pray, honestly, because I really do believe that you know, God is separating the wheat and the tare. We're Mm -hmm. gonna see that really clear. But you were really concerned about this as well. So what have you done and what can you provide for our viewers today so they can look and see what candidates really stand for as far as Christian values? So we produced what we call a voter guide or a candidate fact sheet because there's all these uh, commercials that you see out there and they're spinning where the candidates really stand to try to fool people a lot of times. And we pinpoint it's church approved, 501c3 approved, and we find on the top 10 to 15 issues where each of the candidates, we don't endorse or oppose anybody. We let people have the facts because I believe if you give people truth, right. they'll make good decisions. And so we've got a tool, actually, we have a map we can show the viewers and I can show them how to engage this tool. It's free. It's digital. They can print it. Uh, you'll see here on the map. So they can go to this at what website? Yeah, millionvoices.org. Okay, uh, millionvoices.org. Yes. Write that down, everybody. M-I-L-L-I-O-N-V-O-I-C-E-S dot O-R-G. <laughs> That's right. Millionvoices.org. And this map will come up. This map is on okay. there under voter guides. Uh, but there's also another thing they can do that's even simpler. You can text 80550 on your phone and just text the letters MV. And if you do that, uh, we're gonna show you all the tools, we'll do it. You can either go to millionvoices.org, the website, or you just text 80550MV. If you do that, then we send you the information. And anyone who wants, we've got over half the states, we're at 25 states now, we'll be at 30 by the end of the week that we cover the US Senate, the governor, whatever the key races are, and they can type their two digit postal code. So we live in Texas, We could type TX to 80550, and we instantly get the digital voter guide. Okay. Is there any way to show what happens when we hit on the state? What comes up? Did y'all... I, I don't know if we have that for okay. them, but but when you when you when you hit on the state, you're going to get a copy. I can show you here. Let's just take this is this is New Mexico. So okay. when you hit on the state, you're going to get a digital copy of this voter guide. You can print it. In fact, in New Mexico, three hundred and fifty thousand of those are printed. And I love that you la- launched Daystar Espanol today because. Mm-hmm. 
that is going with Spanish on one side, English on the other, to 350,000 people that are church members in almost 2,000 churches just in that one state. Okay, so like, for instance, let me just read this to you. Um, uh, How do the candidates feel about inflation and reigning in government spending? And then for New Mexico, I can't pronounce his name, Mark. Ronchetti. Ronchetti. Yep. He agrees the government is spending. That's right. And that Michelle Grisham disagrees. That's right. So you have, you know, but over here, schools and parents rights, children should not be forced to stay in underperforming schools. Parents should have freedom to choose the school they spend. The, and, and it just shows, agrees, disagrees. And so, and it's not like God is a Republican or a Democrat, That's right. but you just tell where they stand on these issues that are important to America. Um, energy policies are driving up prices. Uh, trying to replace affordable fossil fuels with more expensive green energy is causing record high prices for fuel, food, and housing. Well, one agrees and one disagrees. I'll let you figure that out. It's not hard to figure (laughs) out. But as you go down and you see late-term abortion and taxpayer funding, and it just talks about, you know, what, what they stand for. And I know there's no perfect candidate that's right. But as Christians, we have to look at some of the issues that are important to God, right? Exactly. And that's what we do. We talk to the voters in every state. Not every voter guide is going to be identical. So it's what the voters in that state most care about. So across the board, crime and inflation are the two big, big, yeah. huge issues. So in the, cycle. everything shows that 82% believe inflation, 72% are concerned about crime, A lot of people are concerned about a fair election, jobs, unemployment. Those are like the top four. And and politics in the classroom. Yeah. Uh, That's that's a big one uh, for a lot of people if when it's polled. And so what happens is we take those issues and on the back of that guide, it's footnoted. We don't just say we think they believe that or that's their party's policy. We literally document where each candidate said each answer to each question and anybody can go look at that. So it's it's literally a resource. We do a lot of work. We got over 10 people that work around wow. the clock to just do this because Because to me, if we can get good information to people, George Barna's numbers are that 75% of the people, the number one factor to decide to vote is a nonpartisan voter guide. And so I love that because like you said, you, 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 you put the candidate on the back, but you also put the website so you can go and see where this is documented that they said or stood for what you're saying on the front. Exactly. And a a lot of times they try to say one thing when they're running in a primary and then want to say something different. That happens a lot of times. And they they flip-flop back and forth. We document their positions. We document where they said what what, what the voters say they care about. Okay, so let's talk about, I know Rachel has a question. I'll go to that in just a second. You... um, Every state is important, but what states are you concerned about right now? Yeah, for the United States Senate, the tightest races are going to come down to Georgia, uh, Pennsylvania, Arizona, Nevada, New Hampshire. Those would be your top five. Wisconsin would be right behind that. Those could go either way. It's going to, government belongs to those who show up, Joni. And so yeah. my, my message to Christians is you can't be light if you won't turn your light on and you keep hiding it under a bushel yeah. because yeah. it's unfair, because the candidates aren't perfect, like you said. Yeah. Until Jesus gets on the ballot, they're always going to be imperfect. Right. And so yeah. we don't let that stop us. And so right. for the Senate, that's what matters. For the governor, and this is huge for election integrity, you mentioned that earlier. In, in Wisconsin, in Michigan, it's now tied. It was 10 points down. Tudor Dixon, was. it's now tied. Those states, Pennsylvania, Arizona, and Nevada, they're going to decide election integrity for 2024 for the president. Mm. And people forget that when you elect these yeah. senators, you're living with that. If you didn't show up in the next six days, you're living with that for the next six years. Mm. Wow. At the governor, in the next week, you get to vote, but for four years in your state— and in the presidential, it's going to decide, yeah. do we do we let everybody vote or non-citizens vote, those kind of things. I think that there are going to be a lot of people that show up. And like you said, our Hispanic voters, they believe in life. Yes. They are family-oriented. Yes. And I believe they're going to—I I know that— I just believe they're going to stand up for truth. And I, I and like you said, the mama bears have to come out. <laughs> People have, they have to come out of the cave. They are. And they have to, and early yeah. voting right now can, can take place as well, it's right? That's right. In most states, early voting is going on right now. Over 50 million people, I think, have already early voted because we're inside a week. Uh, and a lot of people didn't expect conservatives to do it because of the election integrity issues in 2020. Mm-hmm. But they're coming out in force. And the reason I say mama bears is because females 
uh, are, are more uh, upset about violent crime issues. 80% of the grocery shoppers in the home are the females, and they yeah. see the inflation and issue. And the children in their school. And then politics in school. They're tired of the woke indoctrination of their yeah. children, and, and they're going to show up, I believe. Yeah. And, you know, one thing about all of this, Jonathan, we've seen a lot of crazy stuff go on, but we can really clearly see the platforms like we've never seen before, and we see what this president has done. That's right. mm -hmm. I mean, it's perfectly clear, you know, to people to see and understand what certain platforms stand for. Yeah, that's that's so true. I mean, we we clearly see the lines have been made very clear where people stand. Yeah. yeah. Well, Rachel, you have a question. Well, first of all, I have to say I'm a mama bear, and I'm going to be getting out and voting because it's important and it matters. I know in Texas, early voting is open until November fourth, so I'm definitely going to early vote because who wants to wait in line on election day? So I encourage you, if you're in Texas, vote. And all of you guys in Georgia, that is the state that my dad is from. You guys have to show up and vote. That race is so, so, so important. I have a viewer question. Speaking of all the stuff going on in schools, this viewer says, this administration has labeled parents as terrorists and treated them as such for not going along with the federalized agenda of perverting children. They've gone as far as changing Title IX to starve low-income children if a school doesn't accept trans ideology. How should churches and parents respond to such terrible policies? That's an excellent question. And let me, let me tell you, my own school district, there were five cities right around where I live, and 11 school board members flipped just a few months ago because, because people like our viewers got engaged. When the parents get engaged, even if they get attacked or they're called domestic terrorists by this administration, parents will fight for their children. They'll fight for their families and they'll fight for their children. And you've got to show up at all the way down to the school board. I know the Senate matters. You, you mentioned Georgia. Georgia is going to be one of the top Senate races in the country and it's going to matter for the presidential. But when you show up, even at school board, here's what people don't understand. Usually two to 5% show up at school board elections. And when we show up, we're disproportionate. And we flipped all 11 of those. Wow. Uh, we worked in those and got voter guides out, got information out. Tarrant County, we're right where we live, it's mm -hmm. gonna be huge who yeah. the county judge is. So for Texas, for people who don't know, what is the difference between uh, Beto and our governor. Yeah, so between Abbott and Beto, one of the, some of the top issues obviously are guns. That's you know he's been on record saying he's going to take their guns. He is for late term abortion all the way until the baby is born, up until the ninth month. Uh, matter of fact, I was talking to a, a black pastor. He's got a very large congregation of thousands of people, and I explained that to him, and he goes, "Are you kidding me?" He goes, that's not right. And I was like, yeah, it's actually right. And I gave him the evidence. When he got the evidence, it changed what the pastor did about it. So, hmm. so a lot of times they don't know these kind of issues. Right. Uh, big government, COVID lockdowns, we can go on and on, but we have a voter guide for that. You can text uh, TX to 80550 and you'll get that voter guide. Okay, Josh, you have a question? Hey, Joni, I sure do, but I just wanted to encourage our viewers to um, text that number uh, on the screen. I just did it, and uh, I got a text immediately back, and then I could select my state. So it's text MV to 80550. And if you're out of America, if you're, uh, you might be in Canada, South Africa, Australia, but you want to... Um, Stay tuned to what, um, or stay informed to what's happening in this country. Just go to millionvoices.org. Well, I have got a viewer question, and uh, it says, we are now an inflation nation. i got to tell you, I agree with that, because when I filled up my car last week, I couldn't believe how much it cost. Um, and it says, uh, tell us how the results of the midterm elections can either help or hurt America's economy and the average American. It, that's an excellent question. The way it's going to change it is if the House and the Senate swing. The president's not going to change. Now, a lot of the runaway expenditures that have been happening by the, the party in control of the Senate and the House the last two years, that's going to stop. A lot of those things are not going to get funded, and you're not going to continue to see uh, excessive spending, which leads to these inflations. You, you have a chance to open up energy policy that may be vetoed by the administration, by the current White House, President Biden. Um, 
Wow. So, Jonathan, I know yeah. you have a question as well. Yeah, I know there's six issues that you specifically are targeting. What are those and why? Yeah, some of the top ones are election integrity, like we mentioned. Life is a big issue. Inflation, crime uh, is huge. And then, we, and then another thing that a lot of people talk about is freedom or parents' rights, religious freedom. It kind of encompasses us being able to choose education for our, for well, our kids. Well, people are very so. concerned about what is going on in America with the social media companies in that oh. that truth is being censored in a way like we cannot even believe right now. That's right. And I'm glad you brought that up because part of the tool, when they text this number, we've got a new tool. We talked about this on the show. Mm-hmm. We were trying to develop it. We didn't have it when I came here last yeah. time. We now have it. It's a click to share button. There was a study in North Carolina State University, not a partisan study, that showed Christians and conservatives, 80% of their emails were being blocked and spent, sent to the spam folder. Oh my goodness. And so when you get this text, they can block the big companies. They mm-hmm. can even block me if I get a, a lot of different stuff, but they can't block all of you. Mm-hmm. And so when we send it to the viewers, we send it to you, you click a button and you send it to 10 of your friends. Oh, even right. if you're not in, in that state, like Georgia, she doesn't have to be in Georgia uh, you don't even have to be in America. If you know somebody there, you know a pastor there, you get that state and then you share it with people there. You won't want to miss more from John Graves next. All right. Well, Jonathan, um, it's interesting here that John is talking about that particular pastor. We're not going to name any names. But um, you had more to that story, and I'd, I'd love for you to share it with the viewers because this really kind of shows the heart of yeah. certain candidates. Yeah, we, we actually uh, serve pastors all over the country. And so I, I had, you know, I build relationships with pastors. I've spoken to over 7,000 pastors in person. And one of the pastors I built a relationship with uh, was a black pastor. His congregation was thousands of people. Uh, it was a very large African-American church. And uh, over 40% of the pastors I've spoken to are either Hispanic or African-American pastors. Um, and so we built a relationship. He knew I had been in an all-black church for the first five years I got out of law school. And he calls me when a candidate was running. It was actually in Texas. It was Beto. And he said, hey, you know, normally we, you know, bring the candidates in. We endorse them. Uh, But what gave him pause is when I went over the voter guide and said, this candidate believes in abortions all the way to the ninth month. And he was like, what? No, he doesn't. I was like, yes, all the way to the ninth month, the minute before the child is born. He goes, I'm not okay with that. I said, well, I just want you to know. So he calls me. And literally, uh, Beto had called him and said, hey, you know, I'm, I want to come to your church tomorrow. And so he calls me that night and he says, look, I'm still struggling with this whole political thing. I don't trust Democrats or Republicans, but I trust you. He goes, what do I do? I said, don't ambush him. I said, let him come and talk uh, and t- call him back and say, hey, we're, I'm going to let you talk about crime. I'm going to let you talk about poverty. Uh, but I'm also going to ask you about to help us understand your position on life all the way. And he said, I love it. It's a great idea. So he calls Beto back and literally has that conversation with him and Beto says, no thanks, I don't wanna come tomorrow. And so literally, (laughs) even when pastors get educated on these things, it changes how they pastor people. Yeah, It changes because a lot of pastors, you gotta remember pastors are just people. A lot of people don't understand these things. That's why I call it putting cookies on the lowest shelf. Just get them the facts and let people make it. And and I get grief from both sides. I get grief from my black friends because uh, of the stuff that I do, but I also get grief from people who think I'm spending too much time working with minority churches. I'm like, if the church wakes up, we're going to disrupt all of this political stuff. Right. Uh, So good. Susie, you have a question. Wow, that was so good. Okay, my question is, no candidate is perfect. Only Jesus is. We all know that. So what do you say to voters or people who choose not to vote because of the flaws they see in the candidate, even even though they support biblical values, but these people are flawed. So what would you say I, I to would, those who won't vote? I would say a couple things. Great question. Um, I saw an Instagram this week that said, when you vote, you're not giving a Valentine professing your love for the candidate that you agree with everything. Right. Instead, you're making a chess move of who's going to govern you for the next two, four, or six years. And I thought, that's a brilliant way to say it. Yeah. They're always going to be flawed. And in fact, on our voter guides, you're going to see some things you disagree with with both candidates. And so and so, it's never going to be, unless Jesus is on the ballot, something wrong. But here's the thing. We're not called to have light when we know it's going to win and when it's going to overcome all of the darkness. We're called to all not hide our light under a bushel, or we have to use right. our voice. We, we live in a constitutional republic. Government belongs to those who show up. If we show up, 
we get to decide who governs us. Yeah, and you know, we're not voting a personality. That's right. We're not voting for our pastor. That's right. But we are concerned about policy. That's right. And so that's how we have to vote. Yep. I mean, regarding policy and where they stand. That's exactly right. One one pastor said it this way. I loved it. He said, he said, the way people vote is on personality number one, on party number two, and then they get down to principles and policies. Uh, but really, that's upside down. We should not be voting on their personality or their party. We should be voting first on principle and then on policy. And we may or may not like their personality. Right. What have what has been the most destructive thing that you've seen Biden do? I mean, there's so oh many we could gosh. talk about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, pulling to our troops in this on family <laughs> pulling feud. our troops uh, out like that was one of the that that was intense. Um, I, I would say the inflation issue, the crime issue. Uh, the, the, those have to what be. What about the fossil the fuel? What about selling our that <laughs> depleting our depleting our, our reserves. emergency reserves, reserves, reserves are lower than they've been in forty yeah. years. Forty years. But we're not using it. That's right. Uh, so so he's 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 basically hurting people financially. And people say, oh, I just want to talk about life. Well, finances are also a moral issue. Money is a moral issue. People can either worship mammon or materialism, or they can steward it well. And we're called by God to steward it well. And when we waste it, even as believers, we're told yeah. to not have debt and not run our, our company's business and family upside down. The yeah. government's doing it and it's hurting families. Well, some people are just saying that, well, obviously our president is compromised. And yes, we should pray for him. I pray yep. for him. Yep. Um, but he's not all there. We, no. we clearly all see that. Yes. And so there is another force behind him. And there's some people saying, how do we beat that force behind him? I mean, because it seems like there's a power that's so powerful that it's overruling even our opportunity to go and vote and win and then lose somehow. Yeah, I think you show up in force. You can beat the margin of cheat. They can't have unlimited cheating. There was a big scandal a few years ago in the NBA where the referees were getting paid to throw some games. Yeah. And they said in there they could throw a game by five points or ten points. But they can't throw it by 20 or 30 points. Right. It's too yeah. obvious to everyone. Yeah. And so that's what we got to do. Our job is to show up. It's God's job to be the results. But I'm telling you, Hispanics and mama bears are going to show up, and this election is going to be shocking to people. Okay, yeah. we'll take uh, about 30 seconds, John. Encourage people to vote. There may be somebody who's been on the fence. Yeah, I, I would say uh, use your voice. Don't think that you don't matter. If you text MV or your state postal code to 80550, that is how you can become a voice and an influence for positive change. Awesome. And um, if you could just lay your hands on these and close out a prayer, that'd be great. Yeah, God, I just pray for each one of these needs yes. here. You hear every single one of them. You, yeah. you know when a sparrow falls to the ground, you know in the name of Jesus what these requests are. And so we're asking you to meet these people right where they are. We thank you for that, Father. Amen. Amen. Amen.